Secretary of State Anthony Blinken met with China's president today in Beijing. It's a high stakes visit amid easing, uh, aimed at easing spiraling tensions between the world's two largest economies. Joining us live now to discuss this topic and more is WSFA's White House correspondent John Decker. And John, the Secretary of State wrapped up his trip today. What was the purpose of the visit and what are both sides saying about it? The purpose was to essentially reset relations between both countries. The last time, Sally, that a U.S. Secretary of State traveled to China on official business almost five years ago during the Trump administration. And uh, relations between the U.S. and China have been in a very bad place over the course of that time, starting during the Trump years when the former president imposed very tough economic sanctions, trade tariffs on Chinese products coming into the U.S. Uh, as you know, there was that uh, Chinese spy balloon incident that happened about four months ago that delayed this visit by Secretary Blinken to China until this past weekend. It was a two-day visit, and both sides putting out statements that it was a constructive visit that Secretary Blinken had, uh, culminating with his meeting that he had for 35 minutes with Chinese President Xi Jinping. John, are there any plans for President Biden to soon meet with China's president? Nothing's on the schedule just yet, Sally, but there are two opportunities for such a meeting to take place. One, uh, in early September when the G20 summit takes place, that will be in India this year. Uh, President Biden met with President Xi at the last G20 summit. I was with President Biden at the time. That was in Bali, Indonesia. The other opportunity is in November. Uh, the U.S. is hosting what's known as the APEC summit. Uh, President Biden could meet with President she in San Francisco in mid-November. So what I expect is a meeting will occur, occur between now and the end of 2023. We just don't know where that meeting will happen just yet. John Trump era special counsel John Durham is scheduled to testify on Capitol Hill this week. What is expected to come out of those hearings? Well, you may recall that his investigation began during the Trump years. He was named to that position as special counsel by former Attorney General Bill Barr. His task looking into uh, the investigation that occurred into the Trump 2016 campaign and possible connections that it had to Russia. Uh, what he concluded after his four-year probe uh, was that the investigation into the Trump campaign should not have happened in the first place. And many Republicans Republicans uh, in the House and Senate have looked to that report, pointed to that report as saying that there's weaponization of the Justice Department and the FBI. What we expect, two days of hearings, he'll testify behind closed doors uh, tomorrow, Sally, before the House Intelligence Committee. And then on Wednesday, it's an open hearing. That's before the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, and that hearing likely will be one in which Republicans will ask for Mr. Durham's recommendations to avoid the type of situation that happened in 2016 when an investigation was launched into the leading candidate for the Republican uh, nomination for president. Over the weekend, a number of former top Trump White House officials were very critical of their former boss. Which aides were critical of Trump and what was the focus of that criticism? The focus had to do with the recent indictment, 37 count indictment, uh, which was brought forward by that grand jury in Florida against Donald Trump related to uh, his collection of uh, classified material, national defense information that he kept at his home in Florida. Who are those former Trump campaign top advisors, cabinet officials? One is Mark Esper, the former defense secretary. One is John Kelly, former White House chief of staff for former President Trump, and one is former Attorney General Bill Barr, all very critical of the former president, saying that if indeed these charges prove to be correct, if the government makes its case, then Donald Trump, they say, should not ever be in possession of classified material. Very harsh criticism, Sally, aimed at the former president by individuals who worked for him at the highest levels. President Joe Biden held his first re-election rally in Philadelphia over the weekend. John, how big was this rally and what was his message to his supporters? 
Well, it was big by Biden standards, about 2,000 people on hand, all union members, uh, and the president received the endorsement of the largest union in the country, the AFL-CIO. Uh, his message to those union members uh, was essentially touting the accomplishments that he's had during the past two and a half years in office, passage of the bipartisan infrastructure law, passage of the Inflation Reduction Act, and also touting the fact that inflation has come, come down significantly over the past year, consumer prices were 9% uh, over the course of the past year, just one year ago, now down to 4%. So that's one of the things that President Biden will likely tout as he goes out around the country touting what he's accomplished and what he hopes to accomplish if he's elected to another four years in office. John Decker, live for us in Washington, D.C. John, thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot, Sally. I appreciate it.